one of our one of our sons in this house is coming to share the word of God and I pray that you'll open up your hearts so that you don't look at them as the little boy that you saw right because you can miss the blessing of the Lord when you look at someone and place him at Tigaton University the very minute you place them you are missing something but if you took them and placed them in the altar of God as a servant of the most holy God then you will receive the blessings that befit the prophet of God so we want to honor the prophet of God for the hour and as he comes we'll also introduce uh, the, the, the friends that have come from the winners chapel Nakuru and this will be fantastic let's all arise and welcome Francis Omido who comes to share the God's word with us in the name of the Lord come on lift up your hands above your head and give Jesus a mighty shout of praise hallelujah give him praise thank you very much and you look like this from here you look like this if you go to work like that then the promotion is yours <laughs> you may be seated thank you very much it's an honor to be here this morning and thank you for choosing again to come and worship with us. Amen. I want to introduce, uh, you know, Virginia, Virginia has just been here. We went to the same school in Aitwa, Ijaton. How many Ijatonians are here? Ijaton, Ijaton, Pale, Dr. Chege, and Zipora. Zipora was our CEO secretary, so, uh, and Professor Kuria and the team. So, Nick. Kikundi Kikubwa. And let me do a full disclosure that I'm part of the navigators because I was raised by one. Eh? So when they, they start looking for perspective from a navigator's son, I'll be able to come. <laughs> I'd like us to go straight to God's word. I'm reading the book of John chapter 2. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Um, from verse 1. Uh, if you can give us a bolder font, there are some people's eyes here who are not uh, able to see properly. By the way, do you know your neighbor? Mburu alitufundisha, you need to know your neighbor in front and back, so that if you miss your wallet or something, unasema alikuwa ni brother James. Behind, turn, turn behind. Just in case you lose something. Okay. Could we read together this verse up to verse 11? Verse 1 says. Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there.
Lord Jesus, we are grateful for your word. Scripture says that the entrance of your word brings light. I pray that in every crevice of our heart, every dark place of our heart shall receive the illumination of your word and that we shall manifest your glory through our lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when you're reading scripture, uh, Any time you read scripture, of course, before you interpret uh, scripture and apply, you want to do observation to see what you are able uh, to find out what you are able to see from the passage uh, that you are reading. Uh, for the f 11 verses that you have read, I think you have observed some things. For example, if somebody was to ask you, what have you observed? Who are the people that are mentioned in that passage of scripture? Do you remember who are mentioned? Jesus, the mother, eh? the disciples, the, eh? the, But ma the master, eh, the master, who is the chief guest, isn't it? Who else? Servants, who else? Eh, the bridegroom, who else? Guests, isn't it? So there are many people that are appearing in this passage of scripture. And, but if you notice from the beginning that they came to the wedding by virtue of invitation, isn't it? They were invited. So Jesus is here saying to the disciple, come on guys, eh? Vijana wanasema watunguyas, eh? Tume invite you mahali. There is a wedding and Jesus came with his disciples. Now, we have referred to this as the miracle because the Bible tells us in verse 11 that it was the beginning of the miracles, isn't it? And you realize in scripture, every time God introduces something is very significant. Any time that something happens for the first time, it's very significant. Uh, like when the Spirit of God was outpoured on the day of Pentecost, it was very significant. If you read in the book of Acts, when God was ushering the church into a new dispensation of things, in an, a new way of doing things, because in every season, God reveals his will differently according to the people that he's talking to or dealing with at that time. So these people gather at Galilee, Cana, because of a wedding. It's a social event. And Jesus has come to celebrate with some of the friends there, and he has carried along his ministry team. They come to celebrate. But there is a problem, because anytime you are dealing with a miracle, you are dealing with a divine intervention to a physical problem, isn't it? Because you only say it's a miracle when it is beyond the ordinary. When it, something has happened that you cannot explain, then you say that is a miracle. So a problem has happened in Cana of Galilee that the event organizers misinterpreted or miscalculated uh, the amount of wine that they were delivering to the people, the guests, uh, there may be because it was the constraints of the budget or it, it was just poor calculation. Um, people are more than the wine. And so the mother of Jesus is approached. Now, there is something about this, uh, this passage of scripture that people either do not notice or they just run away from it because it is not, uh, it is not acceptable. It's not palatable. For instance, when you read this, did you notice that you should be disturbed by the answer of Jesus to the mother? Did you notice? Come on, let's go read again. Mothers, and take note of this. Now, this is your son. You say, these guys are in need of wine. Uh, let's go back to verse 6. Yeah? And let's read. <laughs> this is your, your son, right? Mm? Now, let's go back from verse 4, I think. From verse 4. Let's, let's go back. Now, before, before, before Jesus answered, let's look at the polite request of a good mother to a son. Verse 3. A good mother who do not, does not want to exasperate the son. Verse 3 says, 
And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have. It's just an observation, isn't it? It's just an observation. <laughs> I, I notice, son, that they do not have wine. Now, verse 4. Jesus said to her, woman. Do you feel like your heir is standing? Like, you know, if your son, <laughs> your son, first of all, he says, woman. Eh? Your heir is like now standing like you are from a bomb blast or oh, something. But you see, if you look at, because the, the writing of uh, scripture is not our English, normal English language. That's why most of the time when you interpret it literally from, uh, whatever, because Greek is a very rich language, isn't it? And sometimes when you translate it, you don't get the right meaning. But that's not what we are preaching today. Maybe you come for a Bible study and we look at how to answer your mother, all right? <laughs> how ought you as a Christian to answer uh, your mother praise God now but, but by that answer does not mean he won't do nothing so he calls his, uh, his team and he says please take gallons of water and pour it because there was a stone basin and he says, in the manner of the purification of the Jews. Now you'd ask yourself, why is that statement very important to this passage? Why do we need to include the statement that this was in accordance to the purification of the Jews? Because you realize in the structure of the, of the tabernacle, you would not enter the temple without first purification. And the people who have their religion originating from the East, you'll find them doing that. For example, I'm not, I think you've seen the Muslim community uh, have some bottles and they wash their hands and their feet, isn't it? Have you seen that? Uh, they wash their... Any, anytime they do something that they feel defiles them, they cleanse themselves. Hmm? For example, if you go to the washroom, that's defilement, isn't it? It's, huh? You know, we come from this sacred background where in my co own community, if you are in the washroom, you are not even supposed to answer. You are not, <laughs> if, <laughs> if, you know, if people call you, Francis, if you are there, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> So in our traditional African setting, this is not the holy place only. You also have other holy places where you, you are not... <laughs> it's, a, it's a taboo to call somebody in the washroom. So if you did, because it was a defiling moment, when you come out, you are able to wash yourself. But in the manner of the purification of the Jews, because not everybody was allowed inside the temple, because you have walked in your defilement, and if you look at the law, there were so many things that would defile you. Because if you read the Old Testament, I, th I don't think you'll be able to move forward, because you'll be paralyzed by inability to obey the law. Have you ever noticed? Because scripture tells us Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. It says if you are diligent to observe all the commandments that I give you this day. Then this blessing shall come upon you. But most of us read the blessing thinking that I will be the head and not. But you see that, command, that blessing is pegged on the obedience of the law and he says if you obey all not 90 percent not 30 percent and james says he that offends the little part of the law is guilty of all that means in the old covenant it was impossible for any man to live a righteous life because the law could not allow you once you break the little command you've broken all let me give you bad news. It means also that if you've broken any little law in the book, you cannot even command any blessing that he has called upon you. For he says that you must obey all the commandments of the law. 
So in the purification, when you came to the temple, you are supposed to cleanse yourself so that you are able to be up, to approach or sit together with the congregation of the saints. And remember, even in the purification, you are not allowed into the inner chambers of the tabernacle. You are just in the courts. Because only the high priest had the entrance inside the holy of holies. Are you following? So it means only one guy. And even that one guy, it was a matter of death and life. Because you'll be tied a bell around you so that if that bell does not ring, we know you are already dead. It was a very solemn, solemn moment. Now, according to the purification of the, of the Jews, you'll find where the, the location of these stones are located at the entrance. You'd notice when you read scripture, for example, it was not uncommon for you to wash the feet of your guests. Like, if you read Genesis 18, he's seated at Mamre, Abram and Sarai, they're seated. And then Abram saw, sees people that are walking and goes to meet them and says, please come so that you dine and have some food. And he washes their feet and gives them a place to sit. It was not uncommon. Because in the desert, people walk for long distances. It's very dusty and people have sandals on, isn't it? So when you come in, you just wash your feet. Of course, other churches have taken that as a religion. But when any time in the Middle East people used to come to your house, you could, they could sit and then you wash their feet. There was a place secluded for washing of the feet. And that is why in most households, if you are a rich man, that is the job of the servants. The servants would sit, uh, would be able to wash the guest, uh, the guest feet. It was a lowly job if you are able to have servants. That's why when Jesus in John chapter 13 tells the disciples that I, your master, have washed your feet, it means you are also supposed to serve others. Because a master cannot serve the servants. So he's giving us an example for us to follow. That the way he washed our feet, we should also wash other people's feet. But that is not the point. In the purification of the Jews... The water that you put there to wash your feet was not pure water. was not clean water. Isn't it? And the trough were there. And remember, when a trough is out, it's outside, it's not as clean as any vessel that is kept inside. Okay? So Jesus says, now imagine you are this wedding and you have trough outside and the mother comes and says, we need wine. And Jesus called his crew and says, fill this trust with water. The disciples must have said, Diogo, you are crazy. Yeah? This is dirty trough, isn't it? Maybe we go and get some buckets from the house. Maybe we get some good equipment from the house. But he says, fill. Fill these troughs. And then, did you notice there was no prayer? Did you notice? He says, fill these troughs. And then he says, draw them out. N now, uh, <laughs> pick, pick the right vessels and take it to the master. Now let's go back to verse 6. What does it say? Verse 6. John chapter 2, verse 6. Now there were set six water pots of stone according to the manner of the purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Those were big troughs, right? Verse 7. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. Zikisha ja. Eh? He says, Now draw some out now. And take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. <laughs> and the master tests and says, Wow, in every ceremony we go, we have the better wine. So that he lay diluted in Akuja Bada, isn't it? But what is happening with this wedding? That we have the best. Now let's go to verse 9. What, what does it say? Verse 9. When the master of the feast had tested the water that was made wine and did not know where it, in parenthesis, read parenthesis, it says, but. Yeah? 
So anaona mdosi anafurahia ana wine ajui maji imetoka wapi <laughs> He says by the servants he say guy this guy I wish he knew where the, where the water was coming from he would not have tasted The master of the feast called the bridegroom and say wow So you can imagine what was going in the minds of the servant you see look you cannot reconcile where we drew the water or where the wine was made from from the testimony of the master because the master has a grand testimony about what is tasting but where the wine is coming from is terrible meaning that the master would not enjoy it as much if he knew where it was being taken from Is that okay? That if he was there during the making, you would find even some of the servants did not take. Eh? <laughs> Do you know there are some people who, who, who don't have the appetite to eat what they, they prepare? Eh? Like especially if you are going through the, all the motions, you've, uh, you've skinned the, the whatever you have, slaughtered the chicken, you have removed the internal organs, you understand? You feel like I can't I can't eat this. <laughs> yeah? But if the master knew where the wine was coming from, ah, no he would not taste. So the, this miracle is not just about the wine, it's actually about how to make it. Yeah? The process of making wine. Because imagine if you now these servants were sitting after the wedding telling their people, ah, ah, ah So how was the wine? How was the process of making wine? Eh? How is the process of making wine? You get a dirty trough, you pour in gallons of water, and then you start drawing out. <laughs> People would think they are crazy, isn't it? They cannot believe it. <laughs> But God was teaching us now we are moving in a different place. We are moving in a different dispensation. Look my dear sister and brother the people that God is going to use today are people with terrible backgrounds are people with do, do not have the best of testimonies but when their ministry is tested by the recipients they're saying oh how powerful that woman is you know why they enjoy that ministry because they don't know your background they don't know your history Because do you know that some people enjoy your ministry because they don't know you that much? Eh? Ukisimama pale useme praise the Lord in high school uh, the God anointing is upon you unatoka kwa shule watoto wanasema that lady is powerful. But if they came and visited you and they knew your journey. Eh? Pengine you are the guy who was in the clubs dropping it like it is hot. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> but, but now you are you are this polite girl loving the lord explaining the gospel and you today have the patience because you are seeing this girl is just as stupid as i was 10 years ago now you have the patience because of what you've gone through isn't it but before you have that history See the Bible says 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 give us verse 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 This is Paul writing he says consider your calling brethren for you see your calling brethren that not many wise according to the flesh Can, let's read this this is so powerful he says for you see that not many I uh, have verse 27 but God I think that not many of you were noble according to the standards of this world not many of you were wise <laughs> there is a time you could gather even with your friends they don't want you to open your mouth because of the your expression you You see you are excellent expression of your foolishness. Huh? 
even the foolish say huyo jamani mjinga hmm? you could not but look at you now you are now a guy that people are, are calling for he says we cannot move until so and so has come people we were not the wisest we were not the noble not many of you were rich according to the standards of this world but why would god choose you that is weak why would god choose you that is foolish because he wants people to see his glory in you to say look at him if so and so can say a point like that hey god is alive huh? that is god have you noticed that god has this habit that when he wants to exalt you he removes all your support structures he removes everybody around you because he doesn't want any confusion of the glory yeah. that when he lifts you it shall be clear yeah. that was god yeah. so anytime you that is why you should be very careful in the moments of isolation when you feel people are running away, away from you when you feel there is no support god is setting you up for something because he wants to be clear he says if this single woman can educate her children ah watch a mungu into a mungu <laughs> you know there are those songs we used to sing those days eh watch any mungu I, you see and during that time we didn't have many good words but when somebody sings that tears just roll today we have the vocabulary but we lack the heart hmm? we <laughs> We got, we got the linguistics but the heart is not there so when god is preparing to lift you that is why look at the story of david did you know if you studied the story of david correctly you will not read the psalms hmm? the same guy who say my as the deer panted for the water brooks psalms 40, uh, 42 so my soul then you go to first samuel 11 13 whatever and you're reading about this guy do you know that he was even more evil than you because at least you didn't see somebody's wife you didn't send servants to collect her eh? then you realize that he's preg uh, the girl is pregnant then you kill the husband you see you see the anger you're feeling huh? <laughs> Then on top of that, after the guy is dead, eh? now she's alone to raise her ch children. Now you marry the navigator. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Huh? All this time, do you know, all this time his conscience has not woken up. Would you imagine? that you have committed adultery with somebody's uh, wife you've killed a husband all this time your mind is not yet waking up to see hey what am i doing then you come and say hey i want to be like david really huh? <laughs> and most of us is like that but trauma that we feel you know when your mind undergoes a lot of trauma it tends to block that memory isn't it you block that area of your life eh? some people even lose memory on that isn't it because when and some of us when you read scripture we have that kind of trauma when you read characters in bible you want the good parts you don't want uh, the adulterous david uh-uh you don't want the the killer david no you want the good one he says i want to be like david but you see why david was so great is because david was so weak hmm? why was moses the greatest guy the greatest leader because he had a lot of problems the goodness with knowing that you are weak is now your total dependency on god you know god if i do not depend on you that's why Moses was saying, do not make us leave this place without his pre your presence. Because Moses knew. What kills most of us is that we think we are strong. With my PhD, ah, this one I can handle. Hmm? And then you get a PhD guy who has just been confused by a little girl. A fresher in the, in the university. <laughs> eh? <laughs> He's saying, me, me, I can sell even myself. 
guy. All this discovery on algae did not, cannot tell you that you are. <laughs> you know, so I thought he did the algebraic value of zero. Then you study zero until you know, you know. <laughs> But then you have a little girl who is just 19 years old, eh? making the, the, this great guy lose his mind. Why? Because, because, because he believes that he's strong, isn't it? Do you know that any, time, any place of your weakness, you are conscious? Any, any weakness you have when you encounter that problem, you're conscious, isn't it? The things that kill us is, are those things that we feel we are strong. When you go to a place, you know, ah, me, me, I'm strong. I cannot be disturbed. I remember a guy who came on TV and said, I cannot get angry. At all, at all. Mimi, anger is none of my problems. So he sat at the interview, and this guy started. So you are saying you can't get angry at all? So it's, no, I can't. Ah, I can't get angry. For, for what? Nobody can give me a reason. So you're saying whatever happens, you can't get angry. No, he says no. Did you, do you really mean that you can't get angry? At all, at all? He says no, I can't. Why are you asking again? <laughs> says no. I, <laughs> <laughs> you just, no, I just want to know. You have said you can't get angry. Yeah, I've repeated for you like <laughs> ten times. <laughs> I'm telling you, can't you listen? Because that's where he thought he was strong. If you read and study the people God has used in scripture, you'll know you are a candidate. Don't look at what God has called you to do and think, I am not eloquent. I am weak. My background does not qualify. No. In fact, you qualify. God qualifies the weak. God qualifies the foolish. Huh? There are some people, if you lifted them up in your village, every person will know. Ah, if so and so can be rich, God is able. Huh? And how comes that, did you notice anybody that is giving his testimony or teaching, his testimony is magnified by where he has come from. The worse the situation, the better the testimony. If somebody stood here and said, I didn't have a mother, I didn't have a father, I was a chokora, I was a what? Now I'm a doctor. Does that testimony look good? What about the guy who says, I come from a family of doctors? <laughs> yes? And he says, I'm a doctor. We look to him and say, you are an underachiever, isn't it? <laughs> The magnitude of success is not what you conquer. Yeah. Eh? It's the journey you've taken. Because some of, <laughs> of us have taken kilometers. That is why somebody says, by the way, I got a, a job of 10,000 and you're thinking, my goodness, young man, sit down. <laughs> hmm? What is that? If I gave you my story in 1948, I was earning 10,000. Kumbe to the young man, that is a big testimony. To him, it matters, isn't it? To him, God has taken him far. And so, when God picks you up and says, this is what I've called, don't look upon yourself and say, no, my background. In fact, if you read scripture, God takes people to their places of shame. Hmm? Unona pale ulikuwa God has a habit of taking you back there. The place where people are laughing at you, God has a, 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 a humor of taking you back there. Because God wants now you to come back, change and transformed. So that they're able to see what God is able to do. And that is why in your area of shame, do not run away from people. Do not hide it. Allow more people in so that they see the development of God in your life. When you are hosting a cell, don't host a cell when you have all the furniture and you have all the bedrooms. No. In your one small house, when people are still sitting down, you know, 
do you know there are some rooms you live like sojourners on the earth? They are really sojourners. You know, you find up at Duniani Zikwetu, you know. <laughs> there is no even sitting place. Invite them then. Because those are the same people who are going to testify and say, do you remember so and so? Five years, five years back, he couldn't even afford a place to sit on. Look at what God can do. God is able to take the foolish and confound the wise. God is able to take the poor and confound the rich. He says the things that are not to confound the things that are. So that when you glory, you know, uh -uh, it is not me. It is him. Amen. Hallelujah. And now, the shameful people that God has picked, where has he placed them? He says, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, now we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are now have a table at the, 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 the place of kingship. Sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Revelation 1 6, you say we are kings and priests. Revelation 5 9, he says, I heard a loud voice saying, Worthy is the Lamb to open the scroll and to loosen his seats, the Lamb that was slain to redeem us and has made us unto his God kings and priests. Ah, hey. And I thank God that it does not qualify people according to man's standard. Mm? He says to those he predestined, he predestined them to conform to the image of his son. Romans 8, verse 29. That they be firstborn among many brethren. Eh? That he be our firstborn, who is Jesus Christ. And Hebrews says, now he's not ashamed to call us brethren. Because he has qualified us together with him. Oh, praise God. Aren't you excited? That no matter your background. Now at your workplace, people are singing about you saying, wow, what a, a worker. At your ministry, they are saying, what, what a gift. They don't know. Eh? That if they knew you and where you come from, you do not qualify to be there. At all, at all. Hmm? Who is your greatest preacher? Who is your greatest preacher? Ada wale wa TV unasikiza unasikianga nani anakujazi? Eh? Austin. Na jo Austin preaches until he cries, isn't it? Who else? Your favorite preacher? Joel Austin. Eh? But you see, it is very wrong to It's actually a wrong question because you cannot say so and so is my best preacher. You can only say I've had the greatest preaching from so and so. Because it's the preaching you've had. But the preacher, you only know a great preacher whom you've interacted with. Because the preacher in totality is beyond the presentation, is the person, his character, his attributes, isn't it? Not only what he preaches. But you'll find most of the times we enjoy preaching from someone we do not know closely. Eh? Sindio? Unajua ata kwa Joel Austin kuna watu wanahama yo church? Eh? Mimi ni mehama kwa TDJX. It's so boring. Nawe uko hapa na DVD unasema my God. Because the 30 minutes that you see on TV is not the life at Potter's house. No. The preacher. To know the preacher means you know him. And now it takes you character to enjoy a preacher. Eh? Meaning that you enjoy preaching from somebody you know. Because you know he's preaching about prosperity. And you know where he stays. Eh? <laughs> He's preaching about how to raise godly children. And you know his children. And Paul tells us that we give life even though we are dead. Do you know it is possible for a, pre a, a pastor to minister healing to you even though that he's sick? That it's possible for you to be rich from a broke pastor? <laughs> I 
says receive in Jesus name and you come on Sunday and say your word pastor your word ah I went to the office and money was just poured and the pastor is seated here and say oh God I wish you transferred some <laughs> but God has anointed a man to flow in a grace that he's not enjoying hmm? so it's not just the preacher is together with his frailties, his weaknesses. I, I want to shock you that even the most celebrated pastor has their own weaknesses because we are all growing. We usually say that we are work in progress, but we don't believe it. That's why you are surprised when you hear something bad from someone. He's a believer. How could he do this to me? No, he's work in you have just met some part of his life that has not progressed yet. <laughs> but the other part is okay. <laughs> I want to pray that whatever God is calling you to excel in, you shall not look down on yourself. That as dirty as the water pot is, good wine is going to come out. And nations are going to enjoy God is going to, to help you and use you to give life to many, even though you might lack life, for his glory. Wow. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you and to bless you. Thank you that you have gathered us here as your children, that no matter where we have come from, no matter our background, no matter how we are feeling today, and the many times we think we have failed you. Thank you because of your grace. That your anointing is able to rest upon us. And that we'll be able to accomplish the purpose of God for our lives. Are you in this service and you're not born again? You have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You walked into this service. But you have not known Jesus. Don't leave this service without saying yes to Jesus. Lift up your hand wherever you are. I'm going to pray for you. If you are not saved and you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, lift up your hand and we're going to pray with you. Lead you to the sinner's prayer so that your life may be transformed. Hallelujah. Are you there? You came to this service. It's not just a religious gathering. Uh, it's a transformation center for your life. Lift up your hand wherever you are if you want to be saved. And God shall bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray.